All right, let's continue talking about this very interesting figure here. Okay, and uh, in the previous previous video, we already said that um, we already raised two questions. Okay, uh, the first one we said that uh, why you know on, on this figure uh, in each bar we have to look at the relative uh, share okay of each uh, country. Uh, why not just look at the absolute amount? Okay. The second question is why each bar needs to uh, be compared with the far right one, this one about the output. Okay. Uh, especially when we define the abundance of factor, right? Because you know, um, the our natural response might be you know if we already find the share in the words. Um, total endowment of that factor then we could say you know like th that is abandoned or scarce right why we still need to compare to the output uh, remember all of these factors are inputs right but the very last one is output okay so bring your thoughts to cost we're going to discuss this okay and um also um, on this figure, if you find, you know, other countries or their uh, in, uh, abundance of factors of production, uh, something kind of interesting, catch your eyes or, or counterintuitive even, again, bring all of these to class. Okay, we're going to uh, spend some time uh, talking about this guy. All right. Uh, Stoper Samuelson theorem. A very important finding in international economics. Okay, now uh, here let's talk about um, the real-world application. Okay, especially for the United States. Okay, uh, compared to the rest of the world, the U.S. is abundantly endowed with highly skilled labor, while low-skilled labor is relatively scarce. This is what we saw on the previous uh, slide. Right, with that uh, interesting uh, figure, right? Now, uh, this means international trade has the potential to make low skilled workers in the United States worse off, not just temporarily, but on a sustained basis. Okay, and remember, we said that um, because of the uh, Stoper Samuelson theorem. Uh, the relatively scarce factor loses uh, from trade, right? And low-skilled workers, so we're talking about the blue-collar workers, especially those guys, you know, used to work in the manufacturing factories. Um, uh, you see, you know, in the Rust Belt. Okay? Rust Belt is a region uh, here in the U.S., it goes from Illinois to Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, all the way up to New York State. Okay, uh, this region used to have a huge amount of manufacturing factors. Back in 1950s, uh, 60s, they were the world's factory. Okay, they produced a lot and exported a lot to the rest of the world. However, in the past uh, three, four decades, um, we see a significant decrease in the output, actually a, a massive shutdown of the manufacturing uh, factories in the Rust Belt, okay, in this region. So um, these blue collar workers are permanently out of jobs. Okay? And of course, this creates a lot of social and economic issues. Now, uh, here, in terms of the uh, international trade, one thing we want to clarify or re-emphasize, because we actually discussed this before, uh, is what matters more is technological progress. And international trade, especially imports, could be the effect of uneven distribution of technological progress across sectors instead of the cause of job loss. In other words, the fundamental reason for 
millions of manufacturing workers permanently out of a job is because of technological progress or innovation. Okay, the innovation makes some factors or or some industries expand, and other industries shrink. Okay, so these、uh, workers in the shrinking industry here. It's a manufacturing、uh, sector becomes worse off permanently. Okay, trade is actually the effect of the technological innovation. Okay, because of the innovation, we want to export what we are better at. Right, in the U.S., we're talking about the more innovative sectors, and、uh, the less innovative ones tend to shrink. So the trade is just. The other aspect of the effect of innovation, it's not really the cause of、uh, job loss. Okay, you could argue that you know trade、um, kind of you know facilitates this、uh, uneven distribution. Okay, or、um, trade you know helps speed up this process. Okay, when we talk about you know some factors、uh, expand, others shrinks. Okay, this uh, uh, kind of the structural transformation of the U.S. economy、uh, without trade, it could happen, you know, within a period of probably two or three generations. Okay, in other words, it takes a, a longer time to get there, but with trade.、Uh, Especially outsourcing, okay, and we find that you know this happens within a much shorter period of time, probably within a, a one generation. Okay, so of course, as we said, it creates a lot of social and economic problems. Okay, now in terms of the solution, simply speaking, we believe that、uh, it would it would be better to compensate the losers from trade, okay, or as we said. Strictly speaking, from the technological innovation, then prohibit trade. Okay,、um, the economy as a whole does benefit from trade after all, right? This is what we learned from the Ricardian model back in chapter three, right? If the economy as a whole benefits, then we should not stop trading with the rest of the world, right? However, in the past、uh, <clears throat> a decade or so. We do say in the U.S. and actually it goes far beyond the U.S. in the the whole developed, advanced、uh, economies world,、uh, there's a, a rising trend of trade protect protectionism. In other words, we said that you know we should promote made in the U.S., made in Germany, made in U.K. right, and、um, Should better protect the domestic workers from international competition. Okay, but from here we said that's probably not the right answer, the right direction we should go. Okay, we definitely understand you know these、um, group of people、uh, suffers from trade. Okay, they lose、uh, from trade, but we believe the. Economically, the right way to fix the problem is to compensate them, okay, in certain ways. You can, you know, directly giving them the benefits,、um, or you can, you know, do like the、uh, some aid programs like retraining, right, helping them find the、um, uh, the jobs in, in different industries, okay.、Uh, trade protectionism or prohibiting trade. Is the last thing we want to do here, okay? All right. So this is uh,、um, the real-world application、uh, for the、uh, Stoper-Samuelson theory. Okay. Now in the next video, we're just gonna、uh, briefly talk about the, another thing about the factor price. Okay.、Um, it's called the factor price equalization.